I'm Jessica Rhodes from Park and Division, and today I'm going to show you how to make a full length shower curtain like this. So today I'm going to be measuring to find out how many yards of fabric I need to make a wraparound shower curtain for this tub. The first thing I'm going to do is hang up the shower curtain liners, and those are going to help me decide the total width and height that I need for each of the shower curtains that's going to go around the tub. I do know that I need three shower curtains to totally surround this tub. One of them goes across here, one of them goes here, and one goes here. So I'm gonna just get started putting up those liners and then we'll come back and measure. So I think that this is the perfect fullness. It's able to close comfortably, it's not tight, it still has some waves in it when it's closed, and most of the time it's going to be open. So when people come in and they see it, it's going to be open. So it's still going to look really full when it's opened up, and it'll be able to close comfortably. So that's all I'm looking for here. So that's how I know what width I want the curtains to be, because each of these shower curtain liners is the standard width of 72 inches. So now that I know that I need my curtains to be 72 inches wide, I'm going to find out how long I need them to be. I do want the finished shower curtain to go down to the floor. I just like the look of it. I feel like it looks really luxe. It looks really custom. So I'm going to measure between the bottom of the shower curtain and the floor and see how much extra length I need to add. These are 72 inches uh, long as well, which is the standard length of the shower curtain. So let me see how much added length we need. So it looks like we need exactly eight inches of added length. So that will put the finished shower curtain at 72 inches wide by 80 inches long. But we do need to do a little bit of math here to figure out the yardage that we need to make these curtains that size. Here's a quick rundown of what I did to figure out how much yardage I needed for this shower curtain. So this fabric came in a 52 inch width. I knew I needed to leave one inch on this side and one inch on this side to sew it together to another smaller panel. So that left 50 inches after I take an inch off each side. So then I knew that this side had to be 22 inches finished so that I would have my total of 72 inches finished. So I knew that this small panel had to be 24 inches total to leave a one inch on each side for the hems and seams. So then I had to figure out how long I needed to be because that will tell me how many yards I need total. So. I knew that it needed to be 80 inches finished and I wanted a at least a one inch hem at the top. So I added two inches at the top for that because that will be where the buttonholes will go. And down here, I wanted to add a nice wide hem. Usually on a regular curtain, I would add a four inch hem. So I would leave eight inches total, but I didn't want the extra weight here. So I decided to only add a two inch hem. So I left four inches total for folding it over. So. Adding six inches, that meant that I need 86 inches total for each of these lengths. And 86 inches is 2.4 yards. So then I had to figure out how many yards I needed total. So I know I need three of these large sections and three of these small sections. These large sections will each be 2.4 yards long and they will be the total width. These small sections will also be 2.4 yards long, but they are only half of the width approximately of the total width of the fabric. So for that, I need three runs in the total 52 inches and two runs in the 52 inches that I will split in half for the 24 inch sections. So five runs at 2.4 yards comes to exactly 12 yards of fabric. So next thing I'm going to do is measure the length that I need for the unfinished curtain. So I'm going to measure all the lengths and I'm going to cut back. I cut out all the 52 inch pieces 
and I cut out all the 22 inch pieces. This is one of the 22 inch wide pieces and I cut them all to length. So now all my pieces are ready for me to sew the 22 inch pieces to the 52 inch pieces to make the curtain the width that I need it. So I'm going to get started and start pinning the two lengths together for the three shower curtains. Now, I'm first going to lay out the short piece with the pattern side up. And then I'm going to take one of the larger pieces and I'm going to put it pattern side down on top. Because this is how I'm going to sew them together. Now, what I want is for the seam where they're sewed together to be, to not look like a seam. Um, so I don't just want to sew it together right where they meet. I actually cut a little bit extra on the width of both just so I can have a little room to play with exactly where the seam would go. Um, I would really like for the seam to go in the middle of one of the white sections because that way it will be less noticeable. If it goes in this pattern at all, then you will probably be able to see that it's a seam noticeable. And actually, right where these two meet is a perfect spot for that seam to be uh, because there's a little white section here and a little white section here. So they'll meet up really well. And when I sew it together right there, the, uh, the seam won't show because it'll be in the white section. So the seam will be right along there. Okay, and there is the seam. Right there, perfect, right in the middle of a white part, just like I wanted it. And the next step is to go through and press the seam. Okay, so I've sewn all of my narrow sections and wide sections together to make the full width of the shower curtain. And I've sewn down all of the insides of the seams. And you can see on the other side there, that is how the seam looks. It's not going to be noticeable when the curtain's hanging up and when it's all ironed, so that's a win. So now I'm going to go ahead and press all of the seams around the edges. On the sides, I want a half inch seam, so I'm going to fold this over to the 11 on my square, and I'm going to press it. And then just continue on like that. So I wanted to show you how I do the corners. This is the top seam that's one inch. And if you do the corner like this, it looks fine, but um, this could fray and cause fraying to come out on the edge. And it just looks like a little bit bulky from the side. And it's not something that people are gonna see a lot, but just in case they do see it, a way to make it look a little bit more elegant in my opinion is to unfold it all the way after you're done pressing and then fold it down 
again to the one inch mark like you had it before and then fold it and press it. So then that corner is just folded in like that. And from the side, you're more likely to just see this little point rather than the whole seam. So we finished sewing all of the side seams and now it's time to make the buttonholes. So each machine will have a different way to make buttonholes. Usually you have to have a buttonhole foot on it and it usually has a little setting. So you have to look in your own owner's manual to see how to make the buttonholes, but it's usually pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So I marked the buttonholes where I wanted them on the front of the fabric. And an easy way to space them out is to just, if this is the same width as your shower curtain, to just lay your shower curtain on top of it and mark where all of those are. And that'll get you perfect spacing. Here is the finished product, three full-length shower curtains. If you decide to make your own full-length shower curtains, I would love to see photos, so please tag me in your photos or share in the comments. And a huge thank you to Fabric.com for sponsoring this project with this gorgeous Schumacher fabric.